on June 14, 2020, I turned on to CDC Parkway because I wanted to go back in the other direction on Clifton Road. And I seen the big buildings and I thought, cool, man, we'll take some pictures of these. I'm a stock photographer. I have over 10,000 images and videos on 14 platforms. It's 10,000 unique videos and images. So I wanted to take a couple pictures of the buildings. If you've never seen the CDC in Atlanta, it's a very impressive set of buildings. Um, fantastic architecture. So yeah, so I took some pictures. I never got out of my car. Um, the CDC Parkway is, there's no traffic. It's just an entrance for visitors and um, employees and things like that. Visitors cut off to the right. There's signs for it. There are no restricted signs or anything like that. It's public property, meaning it's open to the public. So I would, I drove down that road, CDC Parkway, stopped. There was no traffic. There was no one behind me, no one in front of me. And, and I took a couple of pictures of the buildings. And my intention was to turn around at the little roundabout down at the end. So as I got down at the end, I heard somebody yelling. And as I was turning around, before I even could think about it, man, this officer then ran up to my car, reached in and took my cannon out of the seat, in my passenger seat, he shoot a window and took my camera and then grabbed the GoPro out of my hand that I was using to film him while he was breaking the law. He took that as well and ran off to the guard tower. I am currently trying to get the entrance security footage, the footage of that public area, so that camera footage is open to the public. It is a matter of public record. And I submitted my open records request, which is a freedom of information request, on September 1st of this year. Yes, it happened last year, and I'm just now finding out that everything about what happened that day was a complete violation of my civil rights from the start, from start to finish. And every single individual, every officer that ended up on scene, that continued my detainment and did all the things they did to me, violated my rights as well. We're talking about Homeland Security. We're talking about the CDC police. We're talking about, I, I want to say the Secret Service is even there. Um, for sure, a police department can't figure out which one, Atlanta PD and DeKalb County, both deny that they were there that day. So it's going to be interesting to see who was there because the uh, sergeant at the Atlanta Police Department told me that um, they don't respond to the CDC. I said, okay. He said it was DeKalb County, so I called them, and they thought that was kind of weird because the CDC is in, it's in, located in the city of Atlanta. So, I don't know. I had to get the footage from the entrance that shows the entire event from start to finish so I can start to piece together exactly who was there um, because once he took my cameras, I was not free to leave. Um, I was detained. He wouldn't give my cameras back. He ignored me for a while. There was another officer there. That officer chose not to be involved in what his buddy was doing because he knew that it was illegal what he just did. But he chose not to stop it either. And neither did any officer that showed up past that point. A police officer, I cannot remember if it's DeKalb County or Atlanta PD. But a police officer eventually got me out of my car. Um, he stood beside me for a duration. I want to say they searched my car. <laughs> Without my consent, for sure. Um, they used the color of law and the threat of arrest to violate my civil rights. And um, this went on for a while. I mean, I think I was detained for 40 minutes. No, it happened so long ago, and the way that I, the officer made me feel like everything I did was illegal. You can't take pictures on federal property and blah, blah, blah. And ever since then, I, I thought that what I did was illegal. Recently, I found out that that's just not the case. I was the one in the right. I had every right in the world to take those pictures. Um, I'm not going to go on too, 
too much about containment because I want to get the security footage to make sure that my memory is as good as that security footage because that's something that can't lie and it will show everything but right now I'm going to take you on this journey with me to, to wave through the mountains of red tape and how all this is going so far I just started this process September 1st so I contact a lot of people I'm going to be making little micro videos uh, when I email people and when I communicate and things that transpire about this I'll be making little micro videos so you can learn something from it but more importantly to draw attention to it uh, because you just can't run into someone's car man and take their personal property out of their car I, I don't care who you are you, you can't do that the police can't even do that no one can do that you have to have a warrant to do that you have to have reason reasonable articulable suspicion reasonable articulate suspicion that I committed a crime reasonable articulate suspicion reasonable articulated suspicion that I committed a crime it's the only way you can search my vehicle it's the only way you can detain me I was not suspected of any crime I had a camera I was eventually let go with no ticket no warning and I was terrified but then again I, I got really upset and there's a video on my channel about that you can watch it if you want to but it's a foul language I was really super upset I just could not believe that, 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 that they got someone like that at their gate that's interacting with the public because that guy in my opinion is dangerous but I did I, I was let go and went across the street and joined this uh, lone protester and been it with him for a while you can tell he really didn't want to be around me I completely understand that and then I just left and I just forgot about it and here recently I found out that, you know that what I did was legal that he was the one that broke the law and so I did some first amendment audits to get over this fear that, that has caused me this past year since it happened a fear that he gave, gave me to not film police not film anything that has anything to do with government that's that's the, those are the kind of things he was saying so once I got over that fear I sat down and I realized okay now I got to I gotta hold him accountable there's no way I can let this guy get away with what he did. 